It finally happened, ladies and gentlemen. We finally got a show about firefighters that's not Fire Force and full of supernatural bullshit. Now, we are going to review and discuss episode 1 in this video, and oh boy, you know what? I think this show can be a real hidden gem if they do this storyline justice. It is way too rare that we actually get an anime show that just depicts a job or something normal. Something that's not fantasy, sci-fi, isekai, or some other weird supernatural stuff. Very, very rarely do we get shows such as this, or such as My Home Hero, for example. And when they do show up, more often than not, they are fairly good. And after episode 1 of Firefighter Daigo, I think this show could be another good one in the catalog. Now, this first episode was just introductory. We didn't really get to explore too much. We just get a few sort of interesting potential plot points starting to build up and some hints at some backstories, but still very, very general, right? First of all, though, I have to say, in this introductory phase, before we do the flashback to their training, the entire city is on fire. Like, the entire city of Tokyo is, like, all burning. Like, everything is on fire. Then the question is, how in the world did this happen? Like, did Godzilla arrive? Did a nuclear bomb explode? Like, what's going on here? I don't know. I guess we will find out eventually. It is here we are introduced to Daigo, which is the, I would say, main firefighter character, and his partner Shun. And they are rescuing people, and is doing their firefighter job, being heroes, basically. And they start off this starting scene pretty good. I mean, I like how they are portraying the different characters, how different they are, and the small signs they show of how Daigo especially is as a person. The small things he does, like lifting the heads of the people after they have been saved, to maybe give them some hope or get them out of their stupor and depression to look up both physically and mentally, who knows. But showing his side of his personality in that way, as well as Shun and the partnership they have and the trust in each other they have and such that they showcase here. It is, of course, after this, we go back in time, like two, three years, however long it was, to their training days, where Shun, Daigo, and also Yuki, Yuka, who are basically the main characters, the starting trio, and probably the main titular characters we are going to be focusing on in the season. And the rest of the episode is basically just doing this training arc, right? Just them doing the start of this hellish boot camp firefighter training to be part of the elite rescue corps. I'm not sure how realistic that is, I'm not sure how tough these trainings actually are in Japan, but considering how Japan is more of a no-bullshit, touchy-feely country, I assume that their rescue corps training IRL is fairly intense, which it should be, because you are going to be going into extremely dangerous situations to rescue people. This brings me into one of my potential issues with the show, it depends how they deal with it, but as I said, one of the three main characters here is female, and I have a lot of issues with shows that are supposed to be realistic, bringing in, for example, females in a role, for example, in this case, of a fire rescuer. Now, if she passed the exam, with the same exact physical requirements and results that the males had to go through, and she was like the only seeming female at past, okay, sure, I guess that's fair. And she would have to be like a really top level, like tiny percent I female to be able to pass the test in that case. But I'm still a bit so-so about letting a female be in this position, as she will have certain physical limitations she simply cannot overcome. And in a job like this, where physical strength, size, etc. is important, I'm not sure how good of an idea it is to let a female into this sort of training. But I do assume they will build out her character a lot, and we will come to like her a lot nonetheless, no matter if it may, might not be the most realistic in all areas. I do like some of the humor as well they showcase in this first episode, with the hellish boot camp and, for example, the drill sergeant being like, how dare you look so uncouth? I see a string of cloth there that's not cleaned off. It's wrinkled here on your uniform. How dare you go stand against the wall all day, you barbarian. And another scene with the drill sergeant being like, you just ran over the rope and the things you are going to use to trust your life to when you're climbing buildings and, buildings and such. How dare you do that? Apologize to the rope right now. And then he's like physically apologizing to the rope over and over again. It's like, yep, that sounds like boot camp. To end off the point though on the female being in this training, I assume this rescue corps training is supposed to be extremely tough, right? That's how they are portraying it. 
And I'm sure it's not going to be as tough as, for example, Navy SEAL training, which I guess is some of the worst you can get in the world in terms of training. But correct me if I'm wrong, but IRL, I don't think a single female has ever completed the Navy SEAL training because it is simply too tough and they might not physically be capable of doing it, like they have their physical limitations. But again, I'm not going to harp too much on it, I just hope they don't, in this, let's say, realistic anime, set up situations where the female character does things that she really should not be able to do. But again, we will have to see how that turns out. Now, when we get to the later portions of this episode, outside the whole hellish boot camp training, we do get to see some slight hints on Daigo's backstory, which I thought was interesting. So the chief fire chief trainer, like this famous rescue corps guy that's training his specific squad, seems to recognize him or his name, but then being like, no, I must be mistaken, can't be that. But then after the fact, Daigo being in his office, being like, please keep this to yourself, I'll do anything, just keep this private, hinting at something that went on in his past, or some somehow him being connected to maybe a job the fire chief was doing in the past, or something along those lines. But again, just building up this mystery of his backstory, and this thing he's trying to keep hidden. So I am interested to see how that turns out. I do also quite like how they are building up the Shu and Daigo relationship this early on in the first episode in this training arc they're going through, where Shun seems to just think that Daigo is like a superhuman, right? He always lasts the longest, is never tired, like is, is he a cyborg, like is even human. But then once he sees that Daigo has this meeting with the fire chief and basically begs him to keep this thing private, Shun thinks to himself, wow, Daigo actually has a weakness. Like, he, he's human after all, he's not perfect. Like, there's something he's trying to hide that he might be ashamed of or something else. And that just, instead of wanting to drag him down because of it, instead of wanting to sort of drag him down to his own level, per se, he instead gets encouraged by it, motivated by it. It's like, wow, he is human, which means I can myself probably get to his level. Like, he is relatable. Like, he's not something that is out of reach. And that is a nice thing I thought that they did there, sort of making his character take that direction in terms of him and Daigo's dynamic, that in the future episodes, he might start just training harder, doing more, just being harder generally, because he wants to reach up to Daigo, or otherwise just feel like he can reach him and his level, and really working hard to get there. And then at the very end, we get this very cold comment from Daigo being like, we are not friends, after Shun basically tries to be friendly and ask to be friends more or less. Now, why Daigo is that cold, and why he might, might want to distance himself, and all these other things, we don't know yet. But again, it hints at some backstory that we will get to know eventually, that hopefully is going to be interesting. Like, for me, the most interesting part of this show is going to be how this trio develops, and their relationship and dynamics that form between them, and how that goes throughout the show. Because if this is going to be a full season of you know, just fire rescuing, I, mean, I think, think that would be cool, right? I mean, I enjoy that, that sort of thing, because it's novel as well in anime, but it is going to make or break based on this trio and the dynamics between them and how they build the characters and relationships, I think. But so far, so good. I don't have any big problems with episode one, and I'm very much looking forward to the next one. With all that being said, what do you think about episode one of Firefighter Daigo Rescuing in Orange? Like it, hate it, whatever else, leave those comments down below. Please also do like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff to support this new channel. And if you want to watch another episode one review of a new fall 2023 season show, then go watch this video right here.